international conference. Um, although Forum Europe has organized uh, hybrid events for um, around 20 or so partners uh, since October last year, uh, yeah, October last year, um, and I think throughout the pandemic, over 200 virtual events, this is um, a bit of a landmark event for us because it's the first one that's under the Forum Europe's own initiative um, since the pandemic, um, and I think the, uh, the event that we held the last event we held previous to the pandemic was actually this conference, so a bit of a landmark. Um, the other landmark today is also my daughter's fifth birthday. Um, so happy birthday, Els. Uh, and if she is watching this, it means that she's late for school. So, um, um, But anyway, you're all very welcome. Uh, thank you for being with us. Um, and yeah, we really appreciate your attendance, as I say, both online uh, and in person. Um, we're still on a bit of a journey, uh, constantly optimizing how we do these things. Um, and uh, the amazing Forum Europe team, uh, some of which are here today, uh, Jerry, Rebecca, Annalise, uh, Luke and James are all working very hard to make sure that everything works, um, along with the technical team. Um, yeah, just to make sure that your time with us is as uh, productive and uh, pleasant as possible. So just some practical details. Um, we're not distributing printed uh, delegate packs. However, you should have all received an email this morning, uh, which provides details of the program. Uh, the speakers, the sponsors, and other info uh, electronically. Uh, if anyone hasn't had this, then let us know. Um, let one of the team know, and we can make sure that you've uh, got it, and we can resend it. Um, for those online, um, you will have received this information um, uh, also, but it's also on the platform uh, in front of you. Uh, and again, any problems, you can use the chat tool, which is on the right-hand side of your uh, virtual um, of your screen, uh, and we can respond quickly to any queries that you may you may have. Um, the the Wi-Fi network is uh, Ton Hotel, and I don't believe there's a password. Um, the hashtag for the event is Future Transport EU, so do get involved in the conversation there. Um, for those of you in the room, we do want to hear from you. Um, uh, and if you have a question or a, or a short comment, um, please stick your hand in the air and we'll bring a microphone to you. Um, there's uh, an exhibition stand in the lobby area as well. Um, and there's some expos also on the virtual platform. For those attending online, uh, again, you can use the chat function for your uh, questions and comments, and these will be passed to um, Paul or any of the other moderators during the day, um, during the respective sessions. Before I kick over, uh, sorry, kick over Paul, before I kick off and hand over to Paul, um, I'd like to restate our sincere thanks to um, uh, and appreciation to our sponsors that whose support this event would not have been possible. So to Autostrad per Italia, to Fuels Europe, um, to Huawei, Intel, Nokia, and Savannah Resources, um, and also Bolt EU. Uh, and last but not least, to Haviland, uh, thank you very much. Um, and also to note that de Haviland are also sponsoring the uh, cocktail at the end of the day, which you're all uh, very welcome uh, to attend. Um, so with that, I'll close and I'll hand over to Paul Adamson, Forum Europe's chairman, who will uh, moderate this, uh, this first session. So, Paul, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, James. Um, let me welcome you also on my, uh, on my part. It's great to see you all here. Uh, people have very busy schedules. There are many uh, uh, commitments elsewhere to, to comply with, so we're very happy that, to see you today. And uh, welcome to all of you watching and listening online. Let me give a very brief event overview uh, before we start with our keynote addresses. Um, as we all know, over the past two years, the European transport sector has been impacted significantly by the COVID-19 pandemic. Passenger and freight transport has been severely disrupted. Supply chains have been moved to breaking point, while at the same time, the demand and necessity for the sector to reorientate towards more digital, efficient and sustainable practices has only increased. These ambitions for greener, more intelligent, safer and efficient transport systems remained at the forefront of the European Commission's priorities. And our conference today will once again gather senior executives from the transport and technology sectors, as well as key European and national policymakers to discuss and debate the most pressing issues facing the European transport sector and how these can be tackled to ensure the sector continues to contribute to green innovation and economic development. And as is tradition, we'll have uh, a couple of keynote addresses to start off with. Uh, and it's certainly tradition. Uh, we have uh, great pleasure in welcoming, this time through a pre-recorded message, Henrik Hololai, who, as we all know in this room, 
and online is Director General of DG Move at the European Commission. So without further ado, I hand over to Henrik. Over to you, Henrik. Ladies and gentlemen, in times of crisis, a uh, concerted, effective and timely response at EU level is absolutely necessary. I think we all agree that this was clear throughout the COVID crisis, but even more so today, following Russia's unlawful and unprovoked aggression towards Ukraine. I know it's not the topic of today's discussions, but allow me to say a few words on the ongoing war in Ukraine. I think this is something that uh, we all need to focus on at this moment. Russia's illegal and unprovoked invasion of Ukraine has brought death and destruction back to Europe in a way that none of us could have imagined. It has overshadowed everything else in politics and in our daily lives. The murderous Russian regime is targeting hospitals, schools, civilian targets, making people flee the country as part of its scare tactics. The brave Ukrainians have stood against the aggressor and we are all with them. The Commission condemns this invasion in the strongest possible terms. Aside from the unacceptable violation of the territory of a sovereign country with a democratically elected leadership, the invasion has serious consequences also on our entire transport and mobility system. Since February 23, we have adopted a steady stream of sanctions against Russia in the transport sector. These sanctions are having a significant impact on the Russian regime, which is the least we can do to respond to this unlawful and unprovoked aggression. While the sanctions seek to impede mobility within, to and from Russia, I'm extremely happy that transport is playing a huge role in helping the victims of this conflict. The actions of the transport sector itself have made me particularly proud. These are, there are too many operators to list here, but countless companies across Europe are offering free travel to those in need. These shows of solidarity make me extremely proud, both as a European, but also as a Director General for Mobility and Transport in the European Commission. Now turning to today's topic, the EU and its member states must do their utmost to continue to preserve the integrity and enhance the functioning of the single European transport area. Well-functioning single European transport area is the key for our economy, future growth and also mobility. That is why our sustainable and smart mobility strategy was very timely and important. The success of this strategy depends on a solid and well-functioning single market where competition is the norm and bottlenecks, missing links and unsubstantiated barriers are removed. The strategy, as you know, has three objectives, making transport more sustainable, smarter and resilient. The last objective, resilience, could not be more relevant in the context of the ongoing war in Ukraine. We learn every day more about our potential weaknesses and also challenges we are facing. We have a variety of policy instruments at our disposal at EU, national and local level. These range from research funding to technical standards to EU directives to investment support. We need to pull all levers in order to make the transformation happen, in order to make the transformation accelerate. The strategy has a comprehensive action plan of 82 concrete EU policy measures structured around 10 key areas for action or flagships. It also sets out 14 milestones to illustrate the level of ambition that we have for the European transport system for the next 10 to 30 years. There are three pillars to our action on sustainability. We need to make all transport modes more sustainable, make sustainable alternatives widely available in a well-functioning multimodal transport system and put in place the right incentives to drive the transition. Let me be clear. Our intention is to reduce emissions, not mobility. Greening mobility must be the new license for the transport sector to grow. But we need more transport and mobility for our businesses. But this is also a demand from our citizens. In order to support the actions above, significant public and private investment is equally needed. 
I think you can all agree with that. Ladies and gentlemen, the first two years have been extremely busy with two major policy packages that drive further sustainable and smart mobility in the EU. The Fit for 55 policy package is a massive package with a dozen policy initiatives. As part of the package, the Commission proposes an ambition revision also of the CO2 standards for the cars and vans. And there is also a review of the CO2 standards for heavy duty vehicles foreseen still this year. This is complemented by our proposal for the alternative fuels infrastructure. We proposed a set of binding targets for member states to ensure that efficient, publicly accessible infrastructure is in place for zero emission vehicle uptake. Such a push for vehicles and infrastructure is flanked by measures to address user behavior and incentivize the uptake of such vehicles. Following up in December, we have published another major transport policy package, including among other, our proposal for the revision of the 10T guidelines and for the revision of the ITS directive. On the 10T guidelines, we are trying to make sure that what needs to be delivered by 2030 will also be delivered and that we have sufficient measures in place in order to make it happen. The Commission also proposes a revision of the energy performance uh, of buildings directive helping to push charging points in certain parts of the building stock. Smart mobility is a key buzzword, and rightly so. We need to take full advantage of smart digital solutions and intelligent transport systems and make connected and automated multimodality a reality. Cooperative and automated systems have enormous potential to fundamentally improve the functioning of the whole transport system and contribute more to sustainability, but also to safety goals. We need to focus on delivering a commercial market for unmanned aerial vehicles and integrate them to the urban mobility and logistics chains. This work is led by the European Drone Leaders Forum and I hope we can present the Drone Strategy 2.0 before summer. One other important element in the context of smart mobility, of course, is data. Therefore, we have proposed a revision of the ITS directive to increase the deployment and operational use of intelligent transport system services and to create better conditions for the collection and use of crucial data. In 2022, we will work to transform the legal framework to support multimodal travel information, booking and ticketing services new possibilities for selling tickets or mobility services, as well as enabling smart interoperable payment services. This comes on top of, a, a, of and complements a revision of the delegated regulation on multimodal travel information services. We are active in all modes to increase digitalization. This year, we will finalize the implementation framework on electronic freight transport information with the aim to have paperless freight transport by 2030. I'd also like to see more progress, of course, on updating the single European sky, which has a real potential to reduce aviation CO2 emissions by 10% uh, with having more efficient uh, flight paths. But unfortunately, it has been stuck in interinstitutional negotiations for too long. It is more than a shame. We need to ensure consistency between all these different strands of action and the broader Commission initiatives in this area. This is why the Commission has put forward the idea of a common European mobility data space. It will seek to facilitate access, pooling and sharing of data from existing and future transport and mobility databases. Ladies and gentlemen, to, con to conclude, we have already delivered on many key actions from the strategy. Nevertheless, we will not rest on laurels. Several other actions are scheduled for the coming years and multiple proposals are still with the co-legislators. Once adopted, we will collectively need to ensure a smooth entry into force and effective as well as consistent implementation so we can be proud of the current progress. At the same time, we will not rest until all actions have been properly implemented, until we can confidently say that transport has really become more sustainable and smarter and has laid down the process for that in the next years and decades to come. Let me finish with what I started. 
While delivering the objectives of our strategy, we are there also to constantly support Ukraine and help them in multiple ways. They are fighting for our freedom and we need to do anything to help them now and in the future. Glory to Ukraine. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Henrik, and we look forward to welcoming you back in person at next year's conference. As Henrik said at the beginning, it's difficult to, to ignore the issue of, of the Ukraine situation, even though that is not the theme of today's conference, but clearly I think it's all in our thoughts as we, as we progress through to today's conference. Uh, now we have an intervention which is virtual, but it is live, and it is from Roberto Tomasi, who is the CEO of Autostrada per Italia. Uh, welcome, buongiorno Roberto, come va? <laughs> Hope you can hear me. Uh, I can hear you. Uh, good morning to everybody, and uh, thank you, Paul. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning, and uh, it is uh, really a pleasure for me to be to be here today uh, with many representatives of the institution uh, and uh, many, very many representatives of the transport and uh, mobility uh, sector and industry. It is uh, even a, a great pleasure for me uh, to, to share what is uh, our view of Autostrada per Italia. Remember that Autostrada per Italia is one of the major players that manage the toll roads uh, in, uh, in Europe uh, with more than uh, 3,000 uh, of kilometers uh, of network managed by directly by, by us. Uh, and uh, to try to share with you what is uh, our view to uh, the challenge to, of creating uh, a safer, a greener, and more intelligent uh, and uh, efficient uh, transport, uh, transport, transport system. Uh, we have prepared some uh, some chart uh, in order to share with you, and uh, if it is possible, uh, I ask uh, to uh, to put this chart uh, and to share it with uh, the, uh, the the chart uh, with others. Uh, uh, the title uh, of uh, my intervention uh, is linked uh, with uh, the integrated approach uh, that uh, we think it is strategic uh, that we have to implement. Uh, in order to reach uh, the target uh, explained uh, by Eric Holloway. Uh, I, I go to the first chart uh, to, to, to give uh, what is, uh, what is uh, our view. Uh, specifically in, uh, in Italy, in the last uh, decades, uh, we, we have spent uh, less to what was uh, needed uh, in terms uh, of uh, investment in infrastructure. If we look to the Italian figures, uh, we spent half uh, of the uh, of the investment, and we made half of the investment uh, compared to the other to the other countries. Uh, the uh, zero point two percent of the GDP was uh, the total uh, investment cost uh, uh, for uh, for the infrastructure. If we compare with uh, with Europe, uh, Europe uh, the average in Europe was zero point four percent of uh, of the G GDP. We are also looking at an important. Uh, increase uh, in the expenditure on the digital infrastructure digital infrastructure could be and uh, should be one of the of the key enablers uh, to implement the new vision of the mobility but uh, we are looking at an, an important volume of the expenditure in the next three four years we are speaking more than 500 billion euros that are foreseen in the next uh, in the next year if we look uh, to the habits uh, of the population, uh, we, we expect uh, an increase uh, of, uh, of the use uh, of the private car in the next, uh, in the next years. Uh, probably this is also due to the uh, pandemic uh, impact, uh, but this is uh, a, a, part, a part of the life. So we have to take in consideration that we will increase uh, the use uh, of, the private, uh, of the private car. We have also seen a different way to move, and special to the smart working, change uh, the habits uh, of the population, uh, specifically for the activities uh, in uh, in the big uh, in the big city. We we are also foreseeing, uh, and in this case, uh, are very important uh, how we will spend. Uh, to implement the new digital infrastructure and the infrastructure to support the green fuels. The, the example is the, the fast charge infrastructure for the electrical vehicles in the next 10 years. And this is another crucial aspect that we have to address very clearly in order to support the implementation 
of the sustainable mobility. Uh, finally, uh, if we look uh, to uh, the, the situation of these last uh, years, uh, we have uh, seen an important increase uh, of the freight traffic uh, in, uh, in our motor, motorways. So just uh, to give you some numbers, uh, in the pandemic period, uh, we have seen uh, an increase of the tra freight traffic uh, in uh, between 5 6% uh, higher uh, respect to the 2019. So, uh, what does it mean? It means that we will increase, specifically with the e-commerce, uh, some uh, uh, some way to to move the goods uh, in uh, in the country. No, uh, if if we move to the next uh, to the next chart, uh, uh, I think it is uh, uh, important to understand where we are, uh, and specifically in Italy. But this number, the linear. Uh, uh, comparable also with uh, other uh, European uh, European countries. So today, the 77 percent of uh, the private traffic uh, is uh, is made uh, with uh, through the, the road uh, the road transport. Uh, if we look uh, to the freight traffic, uh, so uh, for uh, for the goods, uh, we are more or less close to the 70, 73 percent of the total volume of of uh, the traffic. If we make the ratio between the road transportation with the transportation, the railway transportation, we are a multiple of 10 if we consider the goods and a multiple of 3 if we consider the, uh, the passengers. What does it mean? It means that even if I multiply and I invest on the on uh, the railway transportation, uh, there is no the possibility to shift uh, or in uh, in an important way the uh, the private uh, the private traffic and the freight traffic from uh, roads to to train. And so these are important numbers. If we consider the total numbers uh, in uh, specifically, it it means that we are twelve times more uh, specifically with goods. Uh, uh, in uh, in the traffic uh, in the freight traffic uh, compared to uh, to the uh, railway railway transportation, which are uh, in uh, in our view the three priorities uh, that we have to address. If we go to the next chart, uh, we we have three points uh, that we have to underline. The first one uh, is linked uh, with the modernization, the needs to modernize uh, the network. Uh, uh, we uh, we have almost uh, an, uh, an old uh, uh, infrastructure. Uh, the average of our infrastructure in Italy, but I think that also in this case uh, is uh, comparable. The situation in in Europe uh, is between 50 years. Uh, so we need to implement important investment activities to modernize the infrastructure. We need to uh, verify which are the priority in order to address the vulnerability and the strategic of our network in order to understand if we need a specific investment to develop a part of our infrastructure. And obviously the last and the third priority is uh, the new redesign of the mobility. If uh, we uh, look only at one of these priorities, and if we address only one of these priorities, in our view, we are not able to solve the problem. We need to have a clear view about all these three priorities and to address in a medium long term the, the strategy for, for, each, for each of them. Looking at the first priority, uh, I, I let, let me give the opportunity to uh, to, to give, uh, so if we go to the next slide, uh, what, what is uh, the, the situation uh, of our infrastructure in, in Italy? The 50% the of uh, bridge and viaducts uh, are, uh, was built before uh, the 1970. And so it means uh, that the 50%, uh, the age of this infrastructure is uh, higher to 50, 15 years. And so this infrastructure get, get old. Um, and the design, uh, the original design approach uh, that was uh, used at the time, it was correct that this was the, the original design, today is not yet uh, aligned with the needs of the transport uh, that, uh, that, uh, that we have today in our, in our world. 
the 35% of our tunnels was built before the 1917. I remember that in Italy we have the, the 50% of the tunnels of the entire Europe, and I think that Italy is the country in which there are more tunnels, probably only China has more, more tunnels than, than Italy, because we have a, a, a geography that is quite complex. But what does it mean? It means that we need an important effort of, of investment in the next year to try to modernize our, our infrastructure. And to modernize this infrastructure, we have to take also into consideration the impact that we will have in terms of traffic congestion during uh, the, the, work, uh, the work activities. Uh, if, if we look uh, to the need uh, of uh, the network development, uh, and so if we go to the next uh, chart, uh, we, we have uh, made uh, a simple exercise. The first exercise, uh, look to what is uh, the vulnerability of the, of the network. And so, which are the geographical area in which we could expect some vulnerability in terms of criticalities, geographical criticalities in, in the area. And as you can see, there are some part of, the, of our country in which uh, uh, there are some part of the network uh, that could be uh, vulnerability, uh, that, that, that the, the vulnerability of this part of the network could be very high. If we make uh, another analysis uh, regarding how the uh, part of this network is strategic uh, for the country, uh, you, you can see on, uh, on uh, with the, we, we have a colored with the, the red mark, uh, you can see which are the part of the network that is strategic from a, a, a traffic point of view, from an economical point of view, uh, from uh, the, the view that is the only network that you can use to, to reach this specific area. If we make the sum of the two analyses, these are the uh, part of the network in which we have to uh, understand which are the development uh, project that we have implemented. This is just to uh, try to, to have a network more resilient uh, in terms of risk of vulnerability and in terms of uh, strategic uh, view uh, for, uh, for the growth of, uh, of the country. If we, we go through the the last uh, priority is what uh, was underlined by uh, Eric Ololay in, uh, in his speech, uh, is uh, what, what, all what is linked uh, with uh, the new way uh, and the new infrastructure that we need to support uh, the, the smart uh, smart mobility. There are two types of infrastructure. The one is linked with the digital infrastructure. The other one is linked with uh, the need uh, to infrastructure also the uh, what uh, what uh, the, the, to, to support the sustainability of the mobility. And so I'm speaking about uh, network uh, for uh, for the recharging station, network for the green fuels, uh, and uh, and uh, and so on. For that, uh, we, we have decided to launch uh, in Autostrade per Italia an, uh, an, important, uh, an important program. Uh, if you go to the next, uh, to the next slide, that we have called Mercury. Uh, the, the name in Mercury is linked with uh, the, the project uh, in, uh, that was launched uh, in the 17th uh, in, American, in America uh, for uh, the, uh, the program uh, for, for the space. Uh, why, why we have a call at Berkeley? Because we think that uh, is similar, uh, is a, 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 the revolution of the mobility. For that reason, uh, we have a call at Berkeley. What we are addressing uh, with this specific project, project. we are addressing uh, seven, uh, five, five uh, topics. The five topics are the intelligent roads, uh, uh, how we manage the flexible flexible pricing uh, on the tolling uh, on our tolling uh, tolling roads uh, because with the flexible pricing uh, we can change uh, the use uh, of uh, of the infrastructure. What was uh, what all is linked uh, with the need to to have a green uh, green solution and so green infrastructure 
And uh, the, the other step that we have made uh, is uh, uh, the connection. We cannot think uh, only to uh, what happened in our network, uh, but we have to look also to the mobility as a service. Uh, the mobility not only in the network, but the mobility also in the human mobility is uh, completely linked uh, without uh, uh, distinction between, uh, between uh, Roads uh, uh, or network, uh, network and uh, uh, and uh, urban uh, and urban mobility. Uh, the, the last one uh, is what is linked with the connected infrastructure, and so the relation with uh, with the cars, with the truck, uh, and, uh, and the infrastructure itself. Why we are looking at all this project together? Because we think that the only way to uh, reach the target is to develop. Uh, all these uh, specific aspects uh, in the same uh, way and uh, in uh, an integrated uh, uh, approach. Finally, uh, for that, uh, uh, if, you, if you look uh, at the next uh, slide, uh, we, we have worked a lot uh, in order to support uh, uh, this uh, view, uh, creating uh, with other, uh, uh, our subsidiaries uh, inside the group uh, all the competences in, in order to cover the different aspects uh, from the engineering component from, uh, to the construction component up uh, to the intelligent transportation system competence uh, and to the services competence uh, inside, uh, inside, the uh, inside the company. Finally, I, I, I go to, to the conclusion of my, of my speech. Uh, we have another four points that we have clearly to address. Uh, uh, the, uh, the governance, uh, which are the regulations that we have to, to consider in order to support uh, our view. The view to have an integrated approach. We cannot think to, to think about the smart mobility without having a, a clear idea of the investment that we need to modernize our infrastructure. And finally, let, let me say uh, the, the skill and the competence, uh, and the variety of the competence that we need to support this investment are very important. That we have to implement as the industry a, a stronger relation with the, the uh, universities uh, and uh, with, in general with the school uh, in order to have the clear competence to support this big uh, investment that, uh, that we need. Finally, and uh, I, I complete uh, my, my, my intervention, uh, uh, we, we need uh, to, to be very fast. Uh, the, if we want to reach uh, the target that we have declared to reduce uh, the CO2, uh, the only need is to be fast, fast, faster, uh, uh, to, to implement these, uh, these activities and to be faster, we need uh, rules uh, that help the industry to be uh, aligned uh, with the target that we have received. Thank you to everybody. I hope that uh, was enough, uh, enough clear and uh, uh, thank you, thank you again. Thank you very much, uh, Roberto. A very uh, exciting and visionary uh, overview of things to come in Italy. Thank you for your time, and uh, we look forward to seeing you hopefully in person in Brussels, maybe at our next year's conference. Thank you again, Roberto. Thank you. Thank you very much.